In this tutorial, we're going to really tackle two different uh, anatomical structures. The first being the spinal cord, so we'll identify all the structures of the spinal cord. And then we're going to deal with our three layers and our associated spaces uh, with the meninges. And we're going to work through our roots and uh, passageways that's going to allow for both motor and sensory neurons to come from the peripheral nervous system to our central nervous system. So we're going to start right here and we're going to work through our meninges first. Uh, remember that our meninges has three layers, three tissues, and then the associated spaces that we're going to identify as well. We're going to start superficial most, so we're going to start right out here. We're going to identify our first layer. This is called our dura mater. Our dura mater is going to have a space above and a small space below. We're going to call this space above the dura mater the epidural space. Epidural meaning above. Notice it's yellow. It's filled with fat. It's filled with veins. This is going to be a very important space, especially for uh, you ladies out there that are going to be or requesting an epidural uh, during childbirth. So right between L4 and L5, they're going to insert a catheter. This is known as a saddle block that's going to administer uh, anesthesia into this epidural space to hopefully uh, numb and block all sensations from your waist down to make uh, pregnancy and delivering uh, a little easier. So right here, epidural space. There's our dura mater. We go to our subdural space. That is that little hair line. It looks almost brown in this video, but that little hair line that separates our dura mater from our arachnoid mater. Now that arachnoid mater is called arachnoid because of its uh, meaning being spider, and we see that that arachnoid mater is going to have some extensions into its associated space, which is below the arachnoid, known as the subarachnoid space. Now, this is going to be super important because we're going to see both sensory and motor neurons coming in and out of the spinal cord, uh, particularly integrating into the gray matter right here. Um, and we're going to allow for CSF, so cerebral spinal fluid, to flow around the spinal cord, around the spinal cord, not in. We're going to leave this structure right here known as the central canal to allow for uh, CSF to flow through the spinal cord and through the ventricles of the brain. So back to our subarachnoid space, clinical significance here. Well, when we need a spinal tap, they will insert a needle into this space that will uh, pull out some uh, cerebral spinal fluid that they would then subsequently be able to test for uh, a bacterial infection, uh, specifically bacterial uh, meningitis. So that's our subarachnoid space. The last layer is our pia mater or pia mater. This is our layer that is physically fused to the spinal cord. It's the innermost, deepest most meninge. Okay, there's going to be fused to the spinal cord again, pia mater. So that takes care of our meninges. We're going to deal with our spinal cord and uh, associated branches and path passageways. Let's deal with the spinal cord. We'll work uh, on the outside and then work our way in. Uh, it's pretty straightforward. You find some key landmarks. The first would be this deep groove. And because this is our anterior aspect, we see, we're going to call this our anterior median, because it's in the middle, fissure for deep groove or slit. So this is our anterior median fissure. Well, if we have a anterior median fissure, we're going to have a shallow uh, groove in the back. So our definition for shallow groove, uh, our word we're going to use is going to be sulcus. So this is our posterior because it's in the back posterior median sulcus. So anterior median fissure, posterior median sulcus. That deep groove is going to orient you frontwards and backwards if you didn't have the anatomy, the body, and the spinous process of a vertebra, say in this fifth cervical vertebra, to orient you front to back. Okay, so let's deal with our white, uh, white matter. Our white matter is white because all our axons are actually myelinated. And this is simple directional terms. You have this oriented into fasciculi or columns. So this fasciculated, these fasciculated neurons are gonna be oriented into columns. We have our posterior white column, your lateral white column, and then anterior white column. Okay, now we can go to our gray horns. This is our gray matter. Our gray matter is gray because, or visually gray, because the axons are non myelinated. Now, a couple things we're going to point out right here that little hole is our central canal. This is going to allow CSF to flow through the spinal cord and then loop its way back around to the subarachnoid space to surround the spinal cord. 
We're gonna have an, our posterior and anterior gray come ashore. This is our bridge that's gonna allow for um, crossed extensor reflexes, so motor and sensory, well, sensory and then motor to cross from left side to right side, allowing the uh, stimulus coming in on the left side of the body to uh, communicate and command the right side as well. Now our horns are going to be just like our white matter. We're going to orient them by uh, position. So you have your posterior gray horn, lateral gray horn, and anterior gray horn. Now off of the spinal cord we have a couple of roots. Um, we're going to have our dorsal root. We're going to have our ventral root. Notice the dorsal root is going to have a big bulge. This is known as our dorsal root ganglia. We're going to find a cluster of unipolar sensory neurons in here. So this dorsal root is going to be dedicated for sensory neurons, sensory input moving from the PNS, uh, peripheral nervous system, into the CNS, where right here we're going to integrate with our interneurons, our integration center, that sensory to the motor. And the motor command is going to move out its motor neuron or efferent pathway, E, efferent for exiting, so our efferent pathway, this, our dorsal root is going to be our afferent pathway. So out our efferent pathway via our ventral root, and then it's going to move to this spot right here. This is our first true, our first of three intermingling of both motor and sensory nerves. This is known as our spinal nerve. And then we're going to branch. We're going to branch backwards and forwards. This is going to be our dorsal rami, this is going to be our ventral rami, and then we have this weird loop. This is going to be our rami communicantes. So this is going to be another branch that's going to allow for communication above and below to adjacent uh, spinal cord segments. So that concludes our spinal cord and our meninges. I hope you enjoyed. Thank you for watching.